What's good? What's good, y'all? Um, YouTube's giving me a hard time, but it looks like everything is starting to come online. <clears throat> and uh, Facebook, you can forget about it. I, I think every time I try Facebook with this uh, with this system, it's giving me a hard time. Either it's, it's posted the info from the last stream, or it just uh, it just didn't put anything up at all. So I'm just gonna leave Facebook where it's at. But shout out to YouTube. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted. I wanted to go live and check in with the fam here on YouTube. Um, kind of explain what's been going on lately. Nothing too crazy, but um, I had a couple videos I posted or I was trying to post. And uh, I actually recorded them. And I had some issues with uh, just technical issues. Like one was with the sound. That was like almost two weeks ago. And then the... Uh, the one I was supposed to drop about about a week ago or maybe maybe about four or five days ago, that one had like some crazy camera shake issues. I was doing like an overhead view. So I went ahead and got um got a second camera and that's that's actually what I'm using now. Um I got an A6400 and uh that's gonna be my straight on camera and then my, my camera I was using before my A7R2 is gonna be my overhead camera. So I'm gonna start doing a lot more stuff standalone. Um, not streaming, but like just videos kind of showing you guys the new, um, the new workflow I've been working on with the guitar pedals and stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. So let me check in with everybody. See how y'all doing. My oh, man, Dankin up in here. What's good, bro? Loud and clear. That's what's up. Danger. What's good, man? Marty Yvonne Beauty. What's good, bro? <laughs> what's good, sis? What's good, queen? That's, that's my wife. You know, she, she be checking in. Um, so yeah, man, I hope y'all Friday night is going well. I just want to uh, kind of wanted to tap in and show y'all what else I've been working on. I've been kind of working on a sample pack, like a sound pack. Uh, it's going to be my first one. I, I did like some drum kits on my website, nothing too fancy, but um, I'm going to basically be doing like a full loop kit. Uh, I'm going to include the MIDI on most of them, but I think a couple of them I've, I've already saved and exported without saving all the MIDI stuff. So um, yeah, it's basically going to be a loop pack. It'll have some, some of the MIDI loops and, and, uh, MIDI data in there and, uh, basically build like a whole, you know, dope drum kit around it too. So at least, uh, at least two or three banks on, on the MPC. So I'm thinking like at least 48, 50 sounds in there, drum sounds. And then I'll probably do, probably do like 14 to 16 loops in there. So uh, I'm going to show y'all kind of like the workflow I've been using for the loops, like when I'm creating them and, um, uh, it's pretty dope. Um, it's it's pretty much using Reason Rack and uh, the Sound Toys Rack plugin, um, as well as a couple other plugins. But that's kind of like the meat and potatoes of it. But it's been giving me some really uh, some really dope sounds. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and show that to y'all today. But um, yeah, man, I'm glad y'all doing well out there, Mister Mister. I love my Adam T5Vs. That's what's up, man. Yo, the Adams are just. I wish I could use them while I'm streaming. But uh, next best thing are these uh, these DT seven seventies. They've been uh, it's been cool because like when I'm making beats for the stream um, in the headphones, it sounds pretty decent. So if I can get stuff to sound decent in these, when I go and listen back to it or you know listen to what y'all are hearing, I'm like okay, yeah, it actually sounds better outside uh, of these headphones, which is good. You don't you don't want your headphones to tell you something sounds good and then it sounds like trash on other speakers. You kind of want it to be all the other way around. So um, it's pretty dope. But yeah, I'm glad you like the Adams, man. Those those are uh, they just really help you sound, you know, flesh out the sounds and kind of hear things clashing. And uh, sound design has been a lot of fun on those. Mr. Gilmore G, what's good, bro? Many hits, what's good, man? Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, so I'm gonna get right into it, man. I ain't gonna talk y'all ear off. Uh, I just want to kind of give you an update on what's been going on with me, the channel, why I haven't been posting that much, uh, just a couple technical things, but. Um, the game plan is to uh, to get something out. Actually, tomorrow I'd like to get a, a video up. You know, another one like a dedicated video this weekend. But in the meantime, um, let's go ahead and, and rock out and start messing around with this uh, this loop pack workflow I've been working on. So let me see. We'll go to screen one, and I'll show you all the software screen. And actually, I had a project loaded up. I had to restart my computer. And load that out real quick. Hmm. 
That is not the one. So yeah, it's been a couple of cool workflows I've been working on. This one, um, it's been in some of my other streams, but also I did, uh, I, I've been working on the guitar pedal with the, uh, in standalone with the live two. And that's been a lot of fun, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up building out a whole pedal board and, uh, maybe not a whole bunch of pedals, maybe like two or three, but there's one that I'm saving for, which is like 500 bucks. Um, so I'm probably get that in the next month or two. Um, yeah, I just saved this project before I opened up. I mean, before I reset my computer, let me go find it. <clears throat> All right, boom, there we go. All right, so I just had some, some drums loaded up here. And I'm going to go ahead and start pulling up the uh, plugins that I like to use with this, this loop workflow. So if like come up with a dope loop, I'll probably put some drums to it um, and, you know, just just kind of show you normally what I'll do is just save the loop. But. Um, tonight, we might make something out of it. I got it saved as a preset and uh, loop cat patchwork. And I usually just keep one open at a time. So usually what I've been doing is one instrument at a time, you know, obviously. Uh, um, like when you're creating kind of like I've been doing like a lot of soulful loops. So usually when you're doing that type of style, you usually want to go with like a, a piano I um, usually want to go with some type of plucked instrument, like uh, some type of chime or a harp or something like that, and usually just a really soulful kind of bass. Um, those are kind of like the main three instruments I've been using, but i kind of been sprinkling in some strings, some horns, so we'll try to make another like soul loop tonight, that, that style. And maybe this time I'll use uh, uh, Scalar 2. Um, instead of the the uh, pad perform, which I, I've been traditionally using on the streams. So let's go ahead and load up an instrument here. Uh, I usually been working off this radical piano because it gives you so many presets. And I'll just kind of pick a random patch and start coming up with some uh, some chords. Sometimes I'll change it later down the line. But what I've been really liking in the um, in the reason rack has been uh, this retro transformer is really dope. I usually put that on last. I'm going to try something different tonight. I uh, downloaded, uh, what's it called? Isotope, Isotope's vinyl. They, I think they have like a newer version. So I downloaded that today. That's free. Um, you guys should definitely check that out if you don't already have it. And we're going to use that to kind of make it lo-fi and vibey. So uh, I'll put... Typically put this pulverizer distortion on there and then kind of mess with the wet dry balance and usually i'll keep it pretty dry at first and if i really need to dirty up the piano i'll, I'll crank up the uh the wet dry balance and then let's go reverb throw that on there usually pick like a pastoral plate yeah right like that All right, and yeah, usually I'll throw in that retro transformer, but we're going to leave that and mess around with a couple other things tonight and see if we can get a different texture. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and find some chords. All 
I think um You know what? I'm gonna save this as a preset so we can load it back up and then we don't have to do not to do a whole lot. What I think I'm gonna do is drop this down. Drop this down and then we'll put scalar two right here. That's one thing the um the blue cat patchwork has been really good at is creating effects chains. And uh it just makes it easy to to, to save them, you know, in the MPC software and you can you know, expand it so there's a lot more effects. So I, I like it for creating chains. There it goes. Okay. All right, and we'll go ahead and go right to right to the artist here. See what they got. I think I got to run the output. Port A. Yeah, so I'm getting um I'm getting MIDI in. But I just gotta get scalers MIDI to go out to uh out to the reason rack. Now, I think this is why on the streams before I usually just went with pad perform. Um because sometimes the routing in reason is a pain, but uh with the rack it shouldn't be that hard. It's kinda Put for a channel one output. Still nothing. Hmm. Well, pad perform it is for now uh, until I figure that out because I don't know why it's not. Sending it could be something in the settings here. Let me just check this first. Yeah, I don't know why the MIDI's not coming out. That's pretty crazy. <sighs> Hands down, do I have a video how to set up MPC software to run with Reason 11? Um, well, that's kind of what I'm doing now, pretty much, uh, using Reason as a rack mount, like a VST. Um, you can use it. There's a lot of ways to use it with Reason, so uh, that would probably be a few different videos. Because uh, Reason is a full DAW, so you can use it as a DAW. You can use it uh, as a traditional MIDI, like rack mount slave unit, where you know you're basically running running MIDI from your MPC into 
Reason open as a DAW. Like basically you can open MPC software, open Reason, and kind of use the MPC how you would traditionally in like an old, you know, old school setup, um, hardware setup, you know what I mean, where you're running MIDI into uh, Reason, the, the full Reason software and using it like a, you know, like an outboard synthesizer or, you know, a bunch of outboard synthesizers. So that's one way you can do it. Um, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can set up Reason with MPC software, but I prefer to use the rack. Um, I have been using Reason as a DAW and then keeping MPC separate, but I typically don't open MPC inside of, you know, different DAWs. That, that's the third way you can do it, open it as a VST. Uh, the reason I don't do that is because the tra transport doesn't work, and I like controlling everything from my MPC. I like to do my sequencing in it, uh, my sampling, my drums, and I usually like to use other, you know, DAWs just for their sound. So that's pretty much what I'm using Reason for. Um, in this setup and you know what I'll use it for most of the time but I'm gonna try to mess around with using reason as a DAW and using it as a plugin um, it's just not as fun for me using a spacebar as it is you know using the transport and um, all the navigation and stuff on the NPC Big Will Beats what's good bro John Smith was good man thanks for coming through um, yeah so I'm basically struggling to get Scalar to uh, output MIDI notes in this setup. So I'm just gonna go ahead back to pad perform. I'll turn scalar off for now, just so we can get some chords laid down. Let me turn this down just a little bit. Being here making Nas beats all night. You change that piano up. That's like super, super like soul piano right there, which ain't bad, but I don't want to be that laid back tonight. It's a little harder. And uh, what I like to do too when I'm using pad perform is hold shift and hit full level. And uh, that'll make sure I'm not smashing the keys. And it gives you a little more, you know, range on the dynamics on the piano. It's kind of dope. All right, so let's lay down, lay that down real quick. And usually I'll go in and kind of adjust these notes. Sometimes I'll use Humanize if I'm feeling lazy. But on like a four bar loop, let me make sure I turn my 
I'll correct off. Yeah, usually on a four bar loop, I'll just go in and manually adjust it. that down an octave. I like that, I like that. Go to the next track and uh, let's see if this, add another plug in. I'm gonna go ahead and load up that preset and see how that worked. All right, cool. So usually what I'll do here is, you know, once I had a preset set up, I'll go in and just change out the instrument. So uh, one of the ones I like to do is I like the, the radical ones they have on here. Um, but most of them are in the, in the free version. I mean, in the full version of reason, this one, let me see. Yeah, I'll use this clang sometimes pretty good percussion. Let's try that out. Uh, worst come to worst. If I can't find what I'm looking for in clang, like as far as like a percussive sound, um, I'll just go into the NNXT and find one of my, uh, you know, percussion samples in there. Let's see if we can find a clang now. Oh, you know what I wanted to do with that last track? Uh, we were going to check out that um, isotope vinyl. Uh, instead of using the, uh, the retro transformer, maybe I'll use the retro transformer on this one, but on the main loop, I'm going to go ahead and mess around with uh mess around with RX7. See what that sounds like. I mean not RX7, my bad vinyl. It's kinda cool. Sounds kind of weird. I'm going to try throwing it in Blue Cat and see if it sounds better. Because we already have that chain set up. So let's go ahead. And... I still haven't messed with sound toys on this track yet, even though I probably will at some point. All right, so let's go ahead and throw final in here. Mess with this RPM a little bit. I won't move. Yeah, I've never been like a huge fan of like warping, like wobbling effect. That's why I never got into the SPs like that, the vinyl sim. 
but um this is kind of just kind of like I don't know it's not it's not overbearing cool let's get to this percussion I wonder if it's the warp making it sound off key like that. I think it's just the chords that I played weren't actually in that key. Sounds kind of dope, but I'm gonna try to find another patch. Kind of dope, but I think, let's see, pentatonic major. Let me lay that down real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's missing a note, tonic, so let's see. Thank you. 
think that's an orange. All right, bet. And this is typically where I'll bring in like some strings or something. Um, sometimes I'll mess around with the bass on like the third one, but let's go ahead and see if we can get some strings in here too. All right, and I found, uh, since the last time I streamed, I found a whole bunch of patches I had for reason. Um, kind of like old refills I had from like, I don't know, I had to be like eight, nine years ago. Excuse me. And that's one of the good things working with reason is it, it's such a like, you know, classic piece of software that's been around for so long. There's just a ton of different, like, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many different refills for it. Like, people have been making refills for it for, like, 13, 14 years. So, it, it's just a lot of stuff out there. And you can get a lot of it really cheap, like, really good multi-sample sounds. Go ahead and put in there. It's almost too easy. Maybe I'll mess around with it a little bit though. All right, and this one I'll throw the, uh, the retro transformer on there. I think I'm gonna change the patch because I'm feeling like uh, what do they call them? Tremolo strings, kind of like the ones that are. Let's see what these Marcato strings sound. Like. Sharp.
All right, cool. Got a little loop there. And probably what I'm going to end up doing is resampling the whole thing. But uh, for now, that's a, that's a pretty cool loop. Let me check in with y'all. Hands down. Uh, yeah, man, I appreciate it, bro. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing stuff with Reason because it, it's, it's something I use for a long time, but... You know, I pretty much, uh, I still, like, I just got Reason 11. I upgraded from Reason 5. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, like, you know, getting more into it, using it as a DAW. And it's, it's pretty cool. I've been using Reaper a lot, too, so I'm kind of splitting time between the two. And uh, messing around with, with Ableton Light, uh, Live Light. But I don't think I'm going to make the plunge into Ableton. It's just, uh, it's got a lot of dope, like, features and everything. But I think for what I do... Uh, it might be kind of overkill for, for what I need. So, um, and I'm just not really in a place where I want to learn a whole new DAW, especially all the stuff that I have to catch up to in Reason uh, and Reaper. I really haven't used a DAW that much because I haven't recorded vocals since like 2010. And actually, my man Abraham Dankin is the he's the first one I've recorded probably in at least nine, ten years. So uh, we just recorded a track for uh, for him a couple weeks ago, and uh, it came out really dope. So uh, if you get a chance, check him out. Abraham Duncan, he's on uh, he's on uh, Spotify, you know, all the major streaming sites. Uh, it's a single called Every Every Day. And is it Every Day or Every Day? I don't know. I don't know. I forgot how you spell it, bro. But I checked it out yesterday on Spotify. And uh, the mix was pretty decent. We recorded it here and uh, mixed it here. Let me get to this chat screen so I can see y'all. Now, this chat screen would be dope if it kept all this stuff populated, but... In the meantime, I'll just catch y'all. Send it. Three Wheel, what's good? Matrix Sound Lab, what's good, bro? Thanks for stopping in. Matrix Sound Lab is my man, Kev from, from Jersey. And uh, I really, ha I don't keep up with a lot of my Jersey homies, but he stays on the production thing. And uh, we, we touch base from time to time, man. It's, it, he, he's Machine Gang. And uh, he, he's he's really mastering that that whole workflow, man. So I love watching Kev work, and, and uh, you know the different videos he puts on social media. If you're a machine guy, definitely check him out. Aki Trader tuning in on break. Hey, you got the night shift, bro. I'm on break too. <laughs> I had my little guy all day. He kept me super busy. But um, oh, not for nothing, man. Let me uh. Also mention, um, I've been sending out emails and kind of trying to keep everybody notified about uh, the uh, the hoodies that I just dropped. We did a limited edition drop uh, this week. Um, they were camo NPC gang hoodies, so I don't know if y'all are interested. I don't have a I don't have one yet. Um, I have like a mock up. Maybe I can show y'all on the screen. But um, yeah, we pretty much did uh, we did a limited run of these NPC gang hoodies, these camo ones, and they came out really dope. I did it as a one on one uh, for somebody that requested it, uh, one of the members of NPC gang on Facebook. And um, it was such a dope design when I showed it, uh, showed it to everybody on Facebook. We just got a bunch of requests for it. So I went ahead and, and put together a limited run. Let me uh, let me pull it up for you real quick. Pull it up on the screen. Show y'all real quick. Yeah, it's the uh, Woodland Camo NPC Gang hoodie. And uh, we did like, um, I said, it's like a limited run. Uh, I put the link in the description actually, because uh, it, it's a private link. So I, I didn't, I didn't put it up for like, Everybody, I just kind of sent like an email out to everybody that's on the NPC gang uh, email list and, um, you know, also posted it in the group. So, um, yeah, if, if you, you know, if you're into camo stuff, you know, what I mean, you're looking for hoodies for the for the winter. 
wifey looking for something to get you. He's a really dope, man. It came out fire. Uh, let me show you the picture, too, man, because uh, we actually did took pictures of the original one. Actually, I don't even know what I did with it. I think, um, but I have it posted. If, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you can check it out on my page. Um, I got like a whole post about it. But yeah, man, the hoodies went off this week. Like that's been keeping me busy too. Um, you know, taking care of the orders for that. So I'm going to go ahead and place the orders for uh, everybody who ordered one. Um, place the order Sunday and then I'm going to try to have them out to everybody by Black Friday. I usually take a couple days to press up. So yeah, let's get back to this loop. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a bass, too. Yeah, I haven't even really cranked up the, um, the sound toy stuff yet. Uh, I'm probably going to use it first on this bass, just to kind of give it like a real... Uh, kind of analog tone. So let's see if we can find a cool bass patch. Might just rock out with some reason stock sounds. I believe the ones I have in this massive collection. Uh, they don't stretch down down the, the lower octaves that I like to use. That uh, vinyl plug-in, I mean, it just doesn't stop, man. It's like constant <laughs> static. It makes it seem like you got a turntable playing. Um, like you haven't picked up the needle after the, the song finished. Let's go ahead and go through these. That's cool, a little bass glide. The only thing is with uh, with this patch, it's like when you go up in the octaves, you get these sound effects, these uh, kind of additions to the sound. And it's cool if you're looking to make it sound like a real bass, but I can't do my kind of like upper octave bass trick with it. So, Maybe I'll try like a just a basic um, synth bass tone, and then uh, let's see, yeah, I'll try like a synth bass tone and then mute it afterwards.
messed up on the last one. I think I'll do that little... I like the little glide, but I think it's off key. That's it. Let's see what this sounds like. Alright, now this is where it gets fun. Usually I start dropping stuff in Decapitator. Um, and as far as creating drive and like, like an analog feel, this has been a, a lot of fun to use lately. Still super loud. I think that sample is not uh, what I'm looking for. Um, like velocity, uh, I don't think it has like a velocity level, so I'll probably have to turn turn it down.
All right, now let's see if we get this resample. I know what I'll do. Let's uh, double the length and we'll take, maybe we'll put the strings in the second, second four bars. Let me dirty up the strings just a little bit. I'm gonna do it kind of the same way I did with the bass. Maybe I'll use a little Echo Boy on here real quick. All right, sounds cool. So we'll put, um, let's see. All right, so I'm just gonna bring the strings in for the second four bars. sounds pretty cool now normally what i'll do if i'm designing a loop like a a full one i'm gonna bore y'all to death tonight I'll, I'll go in on um each four bars and kind of like vary it a little bit so like these uh the little, you know little percussion hits um or the the uh what is that again i guess like a chime um i'll go in and kind of just switch it up a little bit but i'm not going to mess around with it too much right now um what i really want to do is resample it and see if we can make something dope with it so hopefully this vinyl plug-in texture comes out sounding official we'll see Another sequence, and I was trying to see if that art that uh, vinyl would turn off that vinyl plugin, but I guess it doesn't turn off unless you tell it to shut up. 
So. Oh, yeah, it's up. All right, boom. So I'm going to go to another sequence and let's go ahead and start chopping up the sample and see if it see if it works. Process. Actually, no. If convert new drum program, I like to put it on pad parameters because I can mess around with the start and end points uh, without affecting the next one. So I do it. Go to next one. I'm not showing y'all the right screen. I can tell already, I'm probably gonna have to uh, adjust the start point on some of these. fun part. Sounds kind of dope. All right, let's set it. Uh, let's call it like eighty six.
All right, I know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna select all of these. Hit warp. And I think the original BPM was 80. Bet. All right, that should. That one's a little late. Let's fix that. All right, let's go ahead and make it eight bars and work on the second part. Missed that one. Real, real boom bapish, uh, Nas Illmatic type right here. Let me check in with y'all. Alright. Pavel Sawinski, uh, just got here. Is there something wrong with me or do I hear some vinyl crackle live? Nah, yeah, it's the plugging vinyl. I, I had to turn it off. Uh, but I, you know, I do, I did keep it in the sample. Whole, whole stream sounded lo-fi yeah man it, it seems pretty cool i just downloaded it today i downloaded it a long time ago like they put it they put it out like i want to say 10 years ago at least but uh they updated the interface it looks cool it's got like a little turntable on it i like the moving notes instead of on humanize instead of humanize yeah yeah um i try not to use when i'm making loops i try not to use uh humanize that much uh, like i'll mess around with it but that's usually if i'm being lazy on the stream i'll mess around with humanize but i prefer to kind of just mainly go in and nudge the notes and stuff i'm pulling that vinyl output volume down a touch yeah I, well i kind of already baked it in so hopefully it doesn't sound too bad oh justin thanks for stopping in too bro by the way jay atlantic joker what was that sample we made tonight yeah, yeah, I just uh I just kinda used reason to put it together and then um resampled it back in, you know, using the uh the resample feature in the NPC. So yeah, I basically made the sample, 
And I'm chopping it up now, trying to put something together. Brendan Henry, thanks for coming in, man. Late arrival. It's all love, bro. It's Friday night. I hope y'all having a good time. Having a little sip as usual. I wish I had more. Honestly, um, it's been a long week. But yeah, man, let's see if we can throw some drums down real quick. I'm just going to keep it real like early 90s boom bat with this one. I'm not going to uh, get too fancy with it. around the swing a little bit. So I'm just auditioning a couple things first. I think it's a little slow, honestly. That little repetitive part is kind of annoying. Let me fix that. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stretch that one. Wonder. Let me see if I jump that up. I'll go ahead and stretch that out a little more. Hmm, little ghost notes. Hmm, that had a an overdub one on that one.
No second hit ain't working for me. Throw a little mix on this thing. Check in with y'all real quick before I get to mixing. Nubian Farrell, what's good, man? Thanks for stopping in. How do you promote your work to the masses? Are you just a hobbyist? Um, I used to go hard for placements and stuff like. Uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s, but around 2010, I just, I didn't really want to mess with the game no more. So, um, I want to call myself a hobbyist. It's kind of, um, like for the, for the right project, like if the right situation came along, I might, um, you know, I might produce a whole project for somebody. It's kind of, um, let me go to my chat screen so I can catch up with y'all. Um, yeah, man, I, I might produce a, a project for somebody if, it, you know, if the sound is right and like, uh, you know, it's the right situation. But um, honestly, kind of in today's industry, there's, there's so many independent routes you can go. Uh, I'm just kind of I don't want to say I'm waiting for the right situation, but I, I have other business endeavors. You know, what I'm saying like I got the NPC gang merch going on. I got um, obviously, you know, the YouTube channel and stuff. It generates some stuff um, working on sound design. There's, there's so many ways to make income as a producer now i kind of don't really I don't, I don't really look at artists as a, a gateway to get what i want anymore um and i haven't for a long time honestly working with artists and rappers was so stressful and annoying to me like talk about the biggest egos man no disrespect to <laughs> any rappers in the chat and i used to rap myself so i get it you know what i'm saying but i just got tired of dealing with egos and when you make music for yourself you don't really have to deal with egos you know what i'm saying so uh, I wouldn't call myself a hobbyist. I do this professionally. I obviously, you know what I'm saying, I make money, but I don't really look for placements. Um, and I haven't released music um, through any streaming sites yet. I probably will. That's my 2021 goal is to start putting out some projects. But uh, kind of what you see here in the YouTube channel is me building up my my producer brand, my brand as a creative. Um, I've been designing, like I've been putting brands together for other people for the last decade. And this is the first time I'm applying those techniques to myself. So um, it is professional. I do get paid. I do pay my bills off of this whole situation I got going on, you know, uh, based around the music. However, um, it's not in the traditional ways, I guess you could say. It might have been kind of long winded, man. My apologies. But I promote my work through YouTube, as you can see, um, Instagram somewhat. But uh, if I was looking to sell beats, I would probably hit Instagram real heavy. Um, link up. Like I, I would go through hashtags like uh, 
And I told some somebody that's in the NPC gang group before, if you're really looking to get placements, link up with artists that you really like. Um, try not to aim too high, you know, where their following is too crazy, where, you know, their ego is going to be through the roof. Um, try to match it with people who are kind of on the same level as you as far as social media following, things like that. But look for gems, like go through hashtags on Instagram and look for like, you know, if you're like a boom bap producer, look for like real hip hop or, you know, kind of tags that artists that you will work with would want to use. And you can just kind of go down the list and just start hitting people up in a DM like, yo, I like your style. You know, I got some beats that are, you know, that are match with what you're trying to do. Um, you know, I'll send you one, you know, send you one or two and see if you like them. You know what I mean? And then if y'all build a connection, you know what I mean? Obviously, you can you can start, you know, uh, selling them, too. I mean, you could sell them from the from the gate. Um, but it's kind of hard to sell stuff if you don't have your following up. So it's good to have, you know, have a following and people who are engaging with you already and people who are kind of co-signing you and stuff. So, and people will see that when they, you know, they look at your Instagram page or your YouTube page and, you know, they'll, they'll see if people are resonating with you. And sometimes it takes time, you know, you got to build it up over a year or two. Um, Barry Allen, ah, craps up on a tall, oh man, I wish I had a tall boy can, bro. You're making me jealous. Big Friday night, sitting at home watching YouTube videos <laughs> about things 99% of people have no clue exist. <laughs> I feel you, bro. I watch a lot of I watch a lot of different YouTube videos. If people see my YouTube uh, algorithm, what they serve me, it's pretty crazy. It's stuff from all over the place. Mac Joseph, some holiday heat. Yes, sir, man. Trying to trying to uh, trying to get cooking in here. Hands down, yeah, man. Just started learning. Thanks for your input. Anytime, bro. Um, you know, my, my goal with this channel is really just to uh, connect with other producers and, and try to share what information I do have. Um, you know, definitely on the production side, but also on the branding side, I want to start sharing more information on that because that's really crucial. You know what I'm saying? As, a, as any type of artist, whether you're a producer, recording artist, visual artist, you know, it's, it's just really important to have your brand, um, you know, certain things built up and, and, and work on certain things. Justin, working with rappers sucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had enough to do. I, I worked with rappers from 1997 to 2010. And in those 13 years, that was enough for me. You know what I mean, like there's a couple of artists like I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll work with like, you know, for somebody I'm really cool with. And, you know, we kind of built a bond in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll, I'll collab with them if, if, you know what I mean, they're making music that I'm vibing with. But for the most part, like, I don't put any pressure on myself to work with rappers, man. Like, I'm good. I'm good off that. No disrespect to them. You know what I mean? There's some really, and, and you know, when I say that, it sounds like somebody jaded. I'm really not jaded. There's some really dope artists that are really about their business out there, um, that are really focused, that you can link up with, and people who are on their way up. So I don't want to say that to discourage anybody. It's just me and my journey. I'm 40 years old. Like, for me, I've outgrown that phase. You know what I mean? Like, um, I've outgrown, like, going on the road with people and, you know, sleeping six deep in hotel rooms on tour and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm too, I'm too grown for that. Like I got a house and kids and you know what I'm saying? It's just not for me. But when you're young, like if you're in your twenties or you don't have any obligations like kids or a family to, to take care of, bro, get out there and hustle. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a tough time now to get out there in person, but getting these uh, Instagram streets, Ink one, what's good, man? Thanks for stopping in, bro. My man Vaughn, super proud of you. Keep pushing. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Vaughn's one of my day ones from back home. Back home in Jersey, man. I miss that dude. I miss all my dudes from Jersey. You work for Isotope, Mac Joseph? Psh, what? Man, you ain't said nothing but a word, bro. I was looking at that, uh... I was looking at the, um... I mean, obviously, everybody's talking about RX-8 and all that stuff, but uh, e even the Ozone stuff, like, I got to kind of get, like, a basic mastering type of situation going on just to kind of, like, you know, maximize my beats. Some of the stuff I have is all right, but I'm not really getting the levels that I want, so. And I might start doing more recording um, of artists and, and, you know, stuff like that. I, mean, I might even get on the mic. Who knows, man? I still got bars. I ain't going to tease y'all, but. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely need, like, some some of that type of stuff. I haven't done vocals in a long time and I know the technology since I recorded vocals is like leaps and bounds, you know what I mean? Going to the next level. So definitely uh, appreciate that, man. Uh, 
Appreciate the offer. Damn me on IG. Yeah, let me write your info down, man. Did you, uh, Brendan Harry, did you know if I can use an iPad Pro as a soundboard on the MPC? There's so many different scents and sounds on the iPad. Excuse me. It's interesting that you said that because uh, I'm hoping to get an iPad for Christmas if my wife is watching. Wink, wink. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm looking to do. Uh, I found a really cool workaround. I mean, not workaround, but I found a really cool workflow using standalone that is using my man So 100's uh, uh, sound packs and stuff like that. And that's been really dope. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, running that through guitar pedals has been coming out with some fire stuff. So, I haven't really been tripping off the iPad, but if I get my hands on an iPad, uh, I definitely would use it as as a, kind of like a resampling tool, like, you know, playing synths on it. And then I would probably have it hooked up to the input to the MPC and then resample it kind of like how I'm doing here. So um, I just like that workflow where the MPC is like the master, you know, run the, uh, you know, run MIDI out to whatever synthesizer, outboard stuff, and just, just kind of treating it like outboard gear. That's what I'm used to, you know what I mean, when I came up, so... That's the workflow I like. Dirty Jerry, stand up. Yes, sir, Big Will. A lot of different ways. Yeah, there's there's so many different ways to use the iPad, man. Um, and I'll probably if I get one, trust me, it'll be on the channel. Like I'm gonna get into it. Picked up an NPC Live two a month ago. Videos that helped you out. Yo, man, uh, I'm I'm glad, bro. I'm glad. That's that was like a big thing for me, man. With this channel is uh trying to share information because when I was coming up. And in the late 90s, early 2000s, it really wasn't this kind of information online. So I had like a couple of producer mentors and they would drop gems on me here and there. But it's like I had to earn them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it was more competitive back then. So it was like they wasn't going to give me the juicy stuff. You know what I'm saying? But now there's so much dope stuff available that it's kind of like I can, I can, uh, you know what I mean? I can show you like 10 different ways. Somebody else can show you 10 different ways to do stuff. But at the end of the day, you're going to come up with your own style anyway. Let me mute this desktop audio. I don't want to. Hopefully that ain't, that ain't too loud for y'all. Big Will, I'm using the first gen iPad with a uh, Less's IO dock. Yeah, that sounds dope, man. That IO dock looks fire. I might have to check that out. Somebody was selling one on uh, Facebook near me for like 60 bucks or something. So I might check it out. All right, let me get back to this beat. Go ahead and save it now. Good saving habits. And we'll do a little mix on it. Already a little reverb on the snare. I don't know if I need to add any more.
Oops. Yeah, so for those of you who just uh, just stopped in, uh, we started with Reason, um, and we pretty much just put together this uh, this loop using um, piano, and then we went with this percussion sound. added the strings on the second four bars. A little bass line. Chopped it up. And now we got this. Might be a little low actually. I think I'll just keep that bass line in there. All right, I'm gonna try something real quick. Um, solo that, go to sampler. See, normally I would like to bounce that to a sample, but for some reason when I'm using Blue Cat Patchwork, it won't uh, sample the first like note. So um, let me go ahead and manually resample this. And let me turn the bass line up. Uh, I'm gonna try to low low pass. Um, I'll do it like a low pass bass line on it real quick, just to kind of give some separation from the main loop to the bass line where we can drop it out. Let's go to eight. Original drum program on right here. Let's 
Oh, y'all can't see what I'm doing. Alright, so basically I took the, uh, I resampled it, put it on, uh, put it on a pad on the original program, and then, uh, went in the filter, and we're just gonna do the classic low pass. And I think I'm going to throw a little EQ on it too. See what that sounds like. Mm. All right, sounds cool. Um, and I'm just going to go back to the main loop and filter out that base on the original sample. school 90 style you know what I mean might even bring back a little bit of that mid And this is kind of where I'm at as a producer these days, man. Like, I used to love digging in the crates and all that stuff, but it's gotten to the point now where it's like you're getting copyright strikes, you're getting stuff taken off SoundCloud and all these streaming services. You know what I mean? Like, the AI is getting so good that using using breaks and using uh well not necessarily breaks, but you know, kind of chopping records, you can get away with it if you chop it fine enough, but. I'm at the point now where I'd rather just create my own stuff, you know what I mean? And it's a, if you develop a good enough workflow and kind of just um, kind of just study the records, right? Like a lot of times I used to listen to, you know, um, listen to old soul records and stuff and just listen what instruments they're using and just try to recreate it using those instruments. You know what I mean? And listen to the to the effects um, and, you know, just just kind of the overall vibe of the record and then try to recreate it with the effects we have now. And we have so many kind of like analog simulation plugins now that uh, I don't want to say it's not hard, but, you know, you can definitely pull it off. I think this sounds like very authentic, like close to a record, you know what I mean? So close to like a, uh, you know, like a soul record if you pulled it off. And I mean, it's really simple. I'm not obviously I'm not the greatest musician or anything, but um, you can kind of just by freestyling stuff and 
you know, using your pad perform, using Scalar and different tools like that, you can come up with some pretty cool loops, you know, or original and um, and chop them up and, you know, make really dope stuff from from the air that you like. So um, that's what I've been on lately. I just I really haven't been into sampling um, a, a couple times that I sampled here on the channel. The videos got demonetized or uh, I don't think any got taken down yet, but, you know, it's kind of like copyright situations. I don't, I don't even feel like dealing with it. So um, and that's just, you know, as producers, we need different ways to kind of bring in revenue. And the last thing you want is like one of your revenue streams or two or three revenue streams getting taken down, um, you know, because of a sample, you know, as you thought you're going to get away with. And it's only going to get worse. I keep telling people like as far as sampling it's only going to get harder to sample from records because the ai is going to get better and better and uh it's going to be hard to get away with anything man i don't know if y'all been keeping up with dj premier but he's been getting sued left and right for old stuff so yeah man i mean i love the culture of digging and all that stuff but at this point i'd rather just create it myself and uh you know i'm I'm, I'm gonna create like some sample packs and make them available to y'all too. So there's a lot of really great sound designers out there. Um, I'm just kind of sticking my foot in the water, but I think I've developed a cool enough workflow. Um, this is just like one of them, but I think I've developed a cool enough workflow where I can like offer some pretty, pretty cool stuff to work with where you don't have to worry about it getting taken down. So we'll see how that turns out, man. Um, I'm gonna test it out, put a couple out there, see, see how everybody reacts to them. And, uh, you know, if people think they're dope, I'll keep making them. Checking with y'all, man. I think I'm going to wrap it up early tonight. Um, I don't have. Uh, I don't have a ton of stuff to. Um, like ideas to work on tonight. But I do. I do want to work on a video for this weekend, so I'm going to try to get up early. And I uh, put another video out this weekend for you guys. Um, but, you know, I just really wanted to touch base tonight. Matthew Stratton was good, man. Thanks for stopping in, bro. Good saving habits. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, lost too many beats. But not for nothing, man. 2.8 really hasn't been crashing lately. Um, I haven't been getting too many crashes. The only time I've been getting crashes is when I solo and mute stuff. But it's been like that since like 2.3 for me. But this new computer hasn't been having it happen as often. So, uh, but anytime I'm about to go into the mixing phase now, I just I just save it just to be on the safe side. <laughs> These rappers think they can take YouTube beats. Yeah, they're finding out the hard way. You know what I mean? It's like it's not even just rappers doing it. It's just like you know, we can't even get away with like a five second sample on our stuff so if they think they're going to get away with minutes of somebody else's beat yeah they're, they're tripping but you know that's a big thing too like when you're uploading to these uh platforms you know making sure that you know your youtube uh i forgot what it's called man the, the sample id stuff or the, or the content id making sure you have all that stuff on your releases because uh yeah people will try to take your beats and then upload it and then give you a copyright strike so yeah, it's pretty crazy but I need to practice what I preach. Like some of the stuff I'm doing online, I need to uh, I need to go ahead and, and get that uploaded too, and, and make sure it's protected. But yeah, man, y'all got any other questions before I, I dip up out of here? I'm out of my little mojito drink. or well, almost out. It's starting to get hot in here. Inkwan, what do you think about Tracklib? Tracklib is dope, man. Um, I haven't used it yet, but uh, I think I'm going to start. Um, I think if I was doing stuff for placements or I was really shopping beats really heavy, I'd be on Tracklib all the time. Because it, it just doesn't, like, if you can get your samples pre-cleared, like, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Especially if you're trying to sell them. Um, I don't know what the prices are for stuff, but um, I was under the impression it was pretty cheap, like five bucks or something just to get something pre-cleared. And then if it turns into like a, uh, like a, I guess it's like a certain amount of streams or something like that. I don't know how it works exactly, but the concept is dope. And I, Eric Sermon is behind it, who's like one of the greatest sampling producers ever. So um, I think Tra Tracklib is dope. And I, I would I would definitely, definitely rock out with Tracklib. 
um, if I wasn't making my own stuff or really, you know, just making my own stuff, it, it's kind of like taking up a lot of time. Like if I didn't have as much time to work on that and I was making more beats and needed to generate more, I, I would be on track live pretty heavy. Over time to cop another hoodie. Yeah, man. Um, you picked up one before. If you did, I appreciate it, bro. I, the the apparel love has been crazy this week, man. Everybody's been rocking out with that uh, that camo hoodie. And um, you know, once again, if you guys are new, I, I put the camo hoodie in the description. It's a limited run. We're only, only going to do them until Sunday, um, and then we'll bring it back next season, maybe. But yeah, it's just like a limited run. Um, and it was just so dope. Like you know, I, I wanted one <laughs> for one, and then. A bunch of guys saw it and uh, were like, yo, why don't you make those for sale for everybody? So, you know, um, I went ahead and did that just just for a week. But uh, I got a couple different hoodie uh, variations on the website. The uh, the fat lace hoodies I was doing before. Oh, this is crazy. Like, I didn't get to tell you all about this, but I was kind of, you know, I set up like a whole. I don't know if you guys saw the video with me performing in like in Philly and I'm, you know, doing my thing with the live too. And, you know, it's kind of meant to be not not an ad, but kind of like promote the the fat lace hoodie for this for the fall season, fall winter season. And um, they're out of stock everywhere, man, like all across the country. I can't I, there's no manufacturers that have them. So um, I don't know if they're just like stuck in China or wherever they make them or Vietnam or whatever. But I've been looking for them for uh, for the better part of two months and they just weren't coming back. So I went ahead and. um created a, a new MPC gang uh hoodie style which is it's the same same materials and everything i use the the tackle 12 like the football letters that that's what the uh the MPC is made out of um so i use the same materials but i just use a different base hoodie so the ones that i i just switched to is more more of a classic look it doesn't have like the the fat laces on it and everything but um it's pretty cool it's got like a little ear earphone hole in it so you can kind of like drop your cord if you, you know, if you like to use headphones when you're walking around. Um, it's pretty dope. I think it's really dope for a producer hoodie. And uh, I got it in two colors. I got black and it's got like gray inside the hood and red with with black NPC letters. So um, I might expand the colorways uh, or maybe next week. I'm going to see what, what, what's available. But a lot of it's just been crazy, man. You know, you guys know what's going on. So a lot of the suppliers have just been wishy-washy and it's it's hard to put stuff out you know when uh when you don't know the supply is going to be there once everybody starts ordering so that's why i went with stuff that i knew i had available uh, mac joseph i'm going to buy your hats i appreciate it man you know what i mean i try to keep new designs coming um this is actually an old school one this was the original patch hat and i updated it to uh this style it's kind of like a woven patch same, same type of thing but a little more detailed i think it's cooler um yeah, and then, you know, I got the classic NPC gang hats with the letters on there. So, yeah, man, um, it's been getting a great, great response. And, uh, you know, people have been showing love for the past two years. And that, that really helps me with the channel. It really helps with everything, man. So I appreciate y'all, all y'all that, that show love on the uh, on the apparel, man. It's it's really, really huge, man. It's really helped me grow everything and, you know, get the live too, and, you know, make upgrades. So I appreciate all y'all support, man. 100% couldn't do this without y'all. So. Thanks to everybody that's been tuning in and showing love and showing support. I mean, Vaughn, dope video. I appreciate you, bro. It's, it's, it's just dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I miss the days we can go hang out. My man Tommy uh, is a producer, too. My man T is a producer. And we also just, we used to go to my man Tommy's crib on Friday nights and, and you know, sip a little something and, and make beats. So that's this is kind of like that same type of vibe for me. It was dope that Vaughn's in here. That's my man. Shot town of Texas was good, man. Yeah, you came a little late in the stream, bro. I wish uh I wish you could have seen it earlier, but uh hopefully you can catch the replay. It was a lot of fun tonight, man. We just kind of made a sample using uh made a loop using reason and uh the the sound toys effects rack and it came out pretty dope. I mean, it's very like primo style. <laughs> Me and Vaughn got a joke too, you know what I mean? He's a he's he's a former boxer. I don't know if he's still boxing, but I used to see him and I'd be like, Sugar Shane, because that was his man, Sugar Shane. And he'd be like, Primo, Primo. <laughs> it's hilarious, man. It's like a little inside joke, man. But uh, yeah, Primo was my dude. So you can you can hear that in a lot of my boom bap stuff. <laughs> Sugar Shane. 
Yeah, man. But yo, shout out to y'all for tuning in, man. I ain't gonna talk your ear off. Thanks for thanks for locking in with me tonight. And uh yeah, I'm gonna try to get a video out for y'all this weekend too, man. Hopefully it's something y'all interested in. So once again, man, appreciate y'all. Catch you on the next one. All right.